Compared to a 9mm, 357 SIG has reduced magazine capacity, increased recoil, and greater muzzle blast and flash. At best, it offers no real improvement in penetration or expansion. What's the point of this cartridge? That question has been asked many times before. And today, I want to explore some possible answers. Does 357 SIG provide any real-world advantage, especially given the advancements in modern 9mm bullet technology? Let's start by analyzing our recent gel test results. Out of the nine 357 SIG loads we evaluated, six delivered near ideal performance. Each of these was a 125 grain bullet, demonstrating excellent expansion and penetration depths right within the preferred 12 to 18 inch range. That's a solid result, but how does it compare to some of the best performing nine millimeter loads we've tested in the past? Just like Dr. Roberts observed in his study nearly two decades ago, our gelatin test results show little difference between these two calibers. If 357 SIG does have an edge over 9mm, it's likely not something that's going to show up in controlled ballistics testing. That seems to be a common theme with this round on paper and in lab conditions. It doesn't appear to offer anything groundbreaking. Yet, it still has a strong following among those who have relied on it in real-world scenarios. The 357 SIG cartridge was originally designed for law enforcement use through a collaboration between SIG Sauer and Federal. The goal was to replicate the ballistic performance of the 125-grain 357 Magnum in a semi-automatic platform. To achieve this, they took a shortened tin case and necked it down to accommodate a 9mm diameter projectile. Unlike repurposing existing bullet designs, most 357 SIG hollow points are engineered specifically to take advantage of the cartridge's higher velocities. When it debuted in 1994, a number of prominent police departments and federal agencies adopted the round, and it saw some commercial success as well. It never quite reached the widespread popularity of the 40 Smith & Wesson, which had launched just four years earlier, but the agencies that committed to 357 SIG seemed more than satisfied with its real-world performance. One downside that law enforcement agencies have often noted is the wear and tear this cartridge puts on their firearms. The 357 SIG operates at extremely high pressures, even more so than 40 Smith & Wesson, which means it can accelerate the aging process of a pistol. However, it does generate slightly less recoil than efforty and significantly less than a 4-inch 357 Magnum revolver. That said, as Dr. Roberts pointed out, it still kicks noticeably harder than 9mm and produces a considerable amount of muzzle blast and flash. Mastering this round requires more effort and practice compared to lower recoil calibers. Another challenge is the cost of keeping a gun fed with 357 SIG. Practice ammo for this caliber is roughly twice as expensive as 9mm and about 50% pricier than 40 Smith and Wesson. The silver lining is that many pistols chambered in. Inferty can be easily converted to fire 357 SIG by simply swapping out the barrel. This allows shooters to train with 40 Smith and Wesson, which is more affordable, and reserve 357 SIG for specific situations, all without a major investment. One area where this cartridge does shine is accuracy. At close distances, it often delivers better precision than most other semi-auto pistol rounds. But where it really stands out is at longer ranges, 100 yards or more, where its higher velocity creates a flatter trajectory, making it easier to land shots compared to typical handgun calibers. Some have suggested that this increased velocity also enhances penetration through hard barriers. While we haven't tested that ourselves, Dr. Roberts' research, along with FBI testing, 
indicates that 357 SIG performs almost identically to 9mm when fired through barriers like steel, glass, and plywood. That said, if you go by real-world reports from officers involved in shootings, you'll find plenty of people who swear by this round. It seems to have built a reputation that goes beyond what we can measure in controlled testing. One possible reason for this discrepancy is the idea that gel tests don't fully capture factors like kinetic energy transfer or the temporary stretch cavity. However, as I mentioned a few weeks ago in our 10 test, most handguns simply don't generate enough velocity for those to make much of a difference. Coroners, surgeons, and other experts who analyze gunshot wounds tend to agree that handguns only stop threats by directly damaging critical internal structures. So I suspect there's another reason why 357 SIG is so highly regarded in some circles. Now, I'm not about to start making up my own ballistic theories, but based on what I understand about human psychology, confirmation bias could play a role. In a situation where 357 SIG was used effectively, it's possible that a 9mm would have worked just as well. However, if the shooter already believes that 357 SIG is superior, they may be more likely to credit the round itself rather than other contributing factors. Another explanation could be what's known as a psychological stop. This happens when an attacker ceases aggression not because they are physically incapacitated, but because they either decide to stop after being shot at or have an involuntary reaction to the experience. In some cases, people drop as if they've been severely wounded even when they haven't simply due to shock or fear. There's historical precedent for this with 357 Magnum revolvers. A retired officer once told me that, in his department, suspects were far more likely to go down after a single shot when the shooting happened in close quarters and low light conditions. He attributed this to the intense muzzle blast and flash of 357 Magnum rounds, which he compared to a small flashbang. That sudden sensory overload could be enough to disorient or even intimidate someone who isn't prepared for it. Some have suggested that the loud report and bright flash of 357 SIG might have a similar psychological effect to what's been observed with 357 Magnum. While it's not something you can depend on in every situation, it's also not entirely unreasonable to consider it as a possible advantage. So circling back to the original question, can 357 SIG do anything that 9mm can't? In practical terms, not really. For most people, especially private citizens looking for a reliable self-defense option, there's little reason to choose it over 9mm. That said, if you're willing to accept the added expense and are confident in your ability to manage the recoil, 357 SIG is a perfectly capable round that offers a few extra perks.